Joining us now to respond to that exclusive interview with ENCA reporter Samkele Maseko is the man himself, Peter Louis Mayberg, the author of that book. So Peter Ace Makashule is saying to Samkele Maseko the one thing he said from the beginning, that he's going to take legal action and that the bowl is already rolling. Hmm. Have you received anything? Um, we have not. As I sit here, my legal representatives, have not, I have not had any communication from Mr. Makashule's office or from any of his lawyers. So at this uh, juncture, these only seem to be threats at this moment. I would just like to add that um, on, my colleague at Daily Maverick, Pauli van Weg, said this on air earlier on discussing the VBS issue. We actually relish the opportunity to get some of these individuals in a court of law. So being sued over allegations of corruption might be a very nice opportunity for us to file for further discovery documents from those who accuse of, us of spreading lies. So Mr. Mahashule is, of course, welcome to um, explore any legal avenue that is open to him as a, you know, as a South African citizen. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, this is a detailed, well-researched book, and if he feels that's his best play, then he's welcome to, to come at us. Detailed, well-researched. Some of the people I understand you've spoken to are people who, at some point, were quite close to Makashule. So mm. let's talk about the timing of when they decided to speak to you and the why. Mm. Did you, in those interviews with the likes of Tabo Magnoni, get the impression that the only reason why they were speaking out against Makashule now mm. is because it would further any sort of political agenda on their side. Yeah, look at the end of the day, so from an investigative journalism point of view, first and foremost, we tackle issues that are in the public interest. We look at issues that involve state capture, that involve the um, misappropriation of taxpayers' money, and we look at issues of corruption. So that is your first and foremost goal. Then one always has to remain cognizant of the fact that sources on the ground, people who once potentially moved close to Mr. Mahashule may have some kind of a motive to get at him or to sort of exert some sort of a revenge because of some sort of a tiff in the background. That is always in play and that makes it so much more important to at least independently then verify some of the other information. So for instance, Mr. Manjoni goes into detail in my book uh, with regards to how uh, Mr. Mahashule dragged him or took him to the Gupta compound in 2013 where they met Atal Gupta, um, then completely independent of that, We'll be hearing, this is not unpacked in my book, tomorrow at the Zondo Commission, Mr. Ngolisi Dukwana, who is a former MEC in Mr. Mahashili's cabinet, provincial cabinet, will also testify how he was taken to the Gupta compound. And these two individuals can also recall very intricate detail around those trips, you know, the dates, the times, um, the location they were taking to, some of the features at the house. So at some point, you know, you, kind of, you, you remain cognizant of it, political motive, but there's also a public interest issue here. We have to keep on reporting on these issues. Is Mahashule in that exclusive interview with our Sam Kelemaseko says, you know, he's known the Guptas from the Tabombegi days. He says some of the people who say he introduced them to the Guptas have themselves gone of their own accord to meet to the Guptas and said to the Guptas, in fact, don't tell Ace that we were here. Hmm. Did you uncover a lot of that in your investigation? Yeah, look, unfortunately, I didn't see that part of Mr. Mahashule's interview. It, it unfolded as I was talking to one of your other colleagues for an upcoming show. Um, I think at the end of the day, look, we, we should uh, be aware of the fact that Mr. Mahashule will try and deflect some of these issues. It, is, it does not reflect well on, on him that he, by all indications, were taking colleagues in the province to the Guptas to enable their state capture ploys that they were laying out in the province back then. So in my book, for instance, I indicate how Manjoni, by all indications, was to be promoted to the Premier of the Free State, whilst Mr. Mahashile was to be absorbed into Mr. Zuma's uh, national cabinet. I want to f uh, focus on th those issues, and I would really relish the opportunity for them to be further unpacked, like the Zondo Commission will do tomorrow. Mr. Mahashule, it, it, it is very much expected from him to now try and deflect and shift the blame with regards to his uh, close ties with the Guptas, especially uh, with the background of the horrific misappropriation of taxpayers' money in the province under his watch by the Gupta family. The Free the Dairy Project uh, is one of the first and foremost issues that comes to mind in that regard. Let's go with Mahashule's position that he's an innocent man and that you and the people you've spoken to and the documents you say you've seen mm. have got this all wrong. What do you do then? Look, Tamakile, uh, <laughs> it is unfortunately becoming a bit of a tired stance from the party. So. Um, you know, I started reporting on major corruption in 2015 around Pross and Mr. Lucky Montana. Same accusations. These are lies. They are to tarnish my name. We've got the documents, and we were proven right in the second highest court in the country. The um, Supreme Court of Appeals in Bloomfield then ruled that 
the allegations around process, total trends, were in fact erect. All the documents corroborated that. So here we've got another instance. It's not documents I've seen, it's documents we've obtained, it's in my position. They've now been made available to several uh, lawyers and third party uh, individuals to ensure that they don't get taken away from me somehow. So. Once again, you know, Mr. Mahashule should just be aware of the fact that what is written in the book is based on a voluminous and extensive piece of research that links him to state capture and corruption. So you would win if this were to go to court tomorrow? I am. I've got no doubt in my mind that we would be victorious if these issues are challenged in the court of law. For the benefit of those of us who have not read this book, what was it about the Free State that made the province so easy to loot as per the allegations in your book. Yeah. I think one, one possibility is that the provinces like the Free State, possibly even Pumalanga Limpopo, but okay, I'll take a specific look at the Free State, kind of does remain on the periphery of the political spectrum or the, the political scene, I suppose, especially as far as media scrutiny is concerned. We've seen extensive research and investigations into national state capture projects, you know, things that unfolded at Transnet, at PRASA, um, at uh, ESCOM, issues involving the Guptas, national departments, the Mvula Mokunyane, thinking about, um, you know, City Press's excellent reporting on the Mvula Mokunyane's project. So these are very much nationally focused. Unfortunately, I think we do you have a problem with much of the public scrutiny, um, you know, from the media, from civil society organizations, perhaps not always directly falling on your sort of provinces that fall outside of a large urban centre. And that might be something we need to interrogate going forward. A lot of the people who have spoken in support of Isma Khashil have asked, where is Peter Louis Mayberg's book on corruption in other parties? Where is Peter Louis Mayberg's corruption book? Uh, on, in the private sector, where's that? Yeah. When are you working on that? Yeah, I don't see any particular need for me to work on a book about private sector corruption. So the two are intricately linked. Um, the, my book on the Guptas and my, the, my current book involves corruption perpetuated by individuals in the private and public sector. They involve private sector companies, white companies, black companies, Indian companies. It's a rainbow nation of corruption. Um, the second argument is, I see it's quite a popular one on Twitter, where's the book on Steiner, for instance? Um, it's a very disingenuous stance. It means you didn't do your research. There are two excellent books on Steinoff's corruption by Rob Rose and James Stein, for instance. There's no dearth of information on private sector corruption in South Africa. It has become a ploy by those who want us to uh, divert our attention from the looting and corruption of the public officials that we need to hold accountable. There's also the argument, Peter, on the other end that this, like you're saying, is not the first book on either government or private sector corruption. Mm -hmm. We've got all these books. Jacques Poe had an interesting book as well, The President's Keepers. There was the standoff book. There's now your mm -hmm. book. No one has been arrested because of the contents, damning as they are. Mm -hmm. So what is the point of it all? Yeah, the, the point is to keep on turning up the pressure. Um, that is a very good point you raised there. Um, our paralysis of the law enforcement environment is now well documented. Um, we keep on heaping and throwing these issues on the table and there's no consequences. The Estina matter, for instance, you know, at least there's been attempts, people have been arrested, they've been put in court, but the, the case has spectacularly collapsed. We as South Africans, as civil society organizations and the media, needs to ask tough questions of the MPA, especially the supposedly uncaptured MPA now led by Shamil Lavatoy. When are we going to see action when senior top-level officials are implicated in corruption? Peter Lee Mayberg, thank you for your time.